Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today is gonna be a pretty quick build. I am currently trying to get ready for my 18th year of teaching junior high students, and my time has been very short here at home trying to get my classroom all set up. So I kinda am gonna lean on the 3D printer for this one. Now, I have done some 3D modeling of some Mandalorian props from the show, and I thought it would be cool to kind of show you how to use a 3D modeling software, one that is easy, simple, free. I use it with my junior high kids and it's pretty easy to pick up. Um, I'll include like a little step-by-step -step instructional on how to get started if that seems helpful to you. But I am gonna show you how to 3D model, 3D print, and then kind of finish out very quickly some Mandalorian props from the show. At least that's the game plan. Let's get to building. I am by no means an expert at 3D modeling, but I have dabbled a little bit here and there, even teaching my junior high kids how to use this program. The program that I'm gonna use is a free online program called Tinkercad. I have an easy little step-by-step -step tutorial printout that I'll link down in the description below that hopefully will explain to you the tools and how to do some of the basic stuff. You can sign in with an email or create an account. It has some tutorials built into the program and it might have help you if you learn the basics just by going to a YouTube search and pulling up some more in-depth stuff. So I'm just barely going to scratch the surface of what this program can do. So the blue grid in the middle is called the work plane and it's where you build your model. To the left of that is the cube view that allows you to kind of snap certain angles and look in and out. You'll also need to use the control and the shift on your keyboard to kind of help you lock certain angles in place or pan things over. On the right is all the preloaded assets in different categories that you can pull from so you don't have to make everything from scratch. A key thing to know is that most basic shapes can be put in as either a solid or as a whole. So if you put a solid object down and want to add an opening, say like on the bounty puck, I can piece together various shapes and join them by selecting both and grouping them. When merged, the holes will cut out from the object. You can control the dimensions by pulling on a side or a corner of the form or by typing the number directly in. I figured out most of this stuff just by clicking on stuff and hovering over objects or buttons to give me an idea as to what it is. A quick Google search can get you the dimensions of most objects found in video games and movies nowadays. So you can go to one and type in what you want and get kind of roughly an idea of how big it should be. I draw my basic shape, then I add the details on top of it. You're working in layers to build this model, so you can take whatever approach you would like to. You can either have an additive effect or a subtractive effect to get the dimensions that you want. If you hover over the shape in the buttons, it'll tell you what they are. To get the swirl lines and Vescar ingots, I use the scribble tool to draw out little patterns. The box in the middle of your shape increases the thickness of the object, and the cone above that is to raise or lower the shape. If parts go out too far, you could use something like draw in a box as a whole and then cut that excess off if you wanted to.
On Beskar ingots, they often have insignias on them. The Empire did collect a lot of Beskar during the Great Purge of Mandalore and stamped it with the Imperial insignia. So instead of piecing together random shapes to make that insignia, I'm going to do another little trick here, which is to convert a basic drawing into an SVG and then import it in. I know this sounds complicated, but trust me, it's pretty simple. I can add a recess around the insignia with with a cylinder hole and then set it inside. I made a few things from various franchises that I'll link on my website if you're interested in them. I might put them on some other file sharing websites once I get more confidence in 3D modeling. After you're done with the model, you can export it in various file types, OBJ, STL, GLTFs, or even SVGs for laser cutting. Most slicer software uses STL files to import the model in, then the slicer converts it to a G-code or some other format to run the 3D printer. I know that sounds like a lot of abbreviated nonsense, it's more like the Different programs need translators to understand each other and carry out the functions that they do. You can also import pre-existing 3D models and customize them how you see fit. Lots of people on 3D model sharing websites offer up what they call remixes of changed 3D models from other people. With my file downloaded to my computer, I can now import that file into an AnyCubic slicer software, add supports or tweak other parameters if I need to, switch to the preview mode, and then hit the button at the top that says slice plate. The software will then take all the settings and automatically write code that will tell the hot end of the 3D printer all the paths it needs to take for each layer of your print, kind of like a robot controlling a hot glue gun. Most will also give you an estimate of how long the print will take, how much material it will use, and even identify or fix possible problem areas that it sees. My AnyCubic Cobra S1 has a remote print that will allow me to connect over Wi-Fi and send the files over to print. I also have an app on my phone that can allow me to monitor the print and give me a notification if, say, I have webbing or uh, misprint. It also has a camera inside the cover of the machine that will record cool time lapses for me. I print out one of each of my models and get ready for paint. I also went ahead and printed a Beskar ingot on my resin printer to see the difference in quality and I ended up liking the finish and the weight on the resin one so I printed a couple of those on my resin 3D printer.
I probably should do a bit of sanding to smooth out the parts, but I'm throwing caution to the wind and just putting on two coats of automotive primer for the build layers. So the thin rectangle you see with the pattern, that's Beskar ingots. The thicker rectangle with the recesses, buttons, screws, and a slanted top, that's the tracking fob. And the cylinder with stair-stepped in details is a grav grenade. My hollow puck is printing while I painted these. You'll see it pop up in the next clip. I'm going to do the most basic paint job on all of these using some acrylic paint and some silver rub and buff. The wax metallic paint gets down down into the remaining build lines and kind of helps to hide most of my anti-sanding decisions. You could also make additional passes with watered down acrylics to dirty them up if you wanted to. The tracking fob has a wire that connects to the prong where the two wires meet. From what I can tell from screenshots of the show, it's a twisted cable, which I don't have any of. So I'm taking a thinner wire, twisting up three pieces of it together, and then hot gluing that into the holes I am drilling. I could have modeled these holes into my actual 3D model, but I wasn't sure how big a size I needed to make, so I just kind of drilled the hole once I knew the size of the wire. You'll also notice that my grav grenade has a button top, which is literally just a glass dome monster eye that I painted red. Eventually I add a piece of styrene to the inside of the hollow puck to close it out. You could add lights to most of these things if you wanted to, but I'm doing a quick and easy version making non-functional props, so I didn't. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, not too difficult. Um, I did these relatively quickly, so they're probably not 100% accurate or sized appropriately. Um, I just kind of winged it as I went uh, and wanted to just show you that 3D modeling isn't as complicated as it seems. There are softwares out there that make it very, very simple for you to execute something pretty quickly and get pretty decent results. Yeah. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to 3D model, 3D print, finish, and hopefully bring something into the world that didn't exist before. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. I'm going to uh, share these with you. Uh, I'll figure out how to do all that, but if you're interested in printing these out, feel free. Peace out. If 
you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and you want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.